Naples is exactly what you would expect from a traditional Italian city. A combination of beautiful old buildings, the best pizza in the world, and the lovely sound of Italian conversations on every street is enticing to say the least. Naples is a stunning city packed with surprises and adventures at every turn. With just two days in Naples, you will have just enough time to discover all the best parts of the city and have a taste of the magic. The city is known for its colorful architecture and delicious pizza. Naples often gets overlooked by travelers, but this city and the nearby villages are well worth the visit. Napoli is one of the oldest and consistently inhabited cities in the whole world. It dates back to Roman times. The city is full of rich history and stunning architecture, just waiting to be explored. Two days in Naples is just enough time to see all the main attractions of the city, eat pizza for every meal of the two days, and take a day trip to a town along the Amalfi Coast. Naples is the regional capital of Campania and the third largest city of Italy after Rome and Milan, with a population of 909,048 within the city's administrative limits as of 2022. Its province-level municipality is the third most populous metropolitan city in Italy with a population of 3,115,320 residents, and its metropolitan area stretches beyond the boundaries of the city wall for approximately 20 miles. Founded by Greeks in the first millennium BC, Naples is one of the oldest continuously inhabited urban areas in the world. In the 8th century BC, a colony known as Parthenope was established on the Pizza Falcone Hill. In the 6th century BC, it was refounded as Nepolis. The city was an important part of Magna Graecia, played a major role in the merging of Greek and Roman society, and was a significant cultural center under the Romans. Since the late 20th century, Naples has had significant economic growth, helped by the construction of the Centro Diarzionale Business District and an advanced transportation network, which includes the Alta Velocita high speed rail linked to Rome and Salerno and an expanded subway network. Naples is the third largest urban economy in Italy by GDP, after Milan and Rome. The port of Naples is one of the most important in Europe. In addition to commercial activities, it is home to the Allied Joint Force Command Naples, the NATO body that oversees North Africa, the Sahel, and the Middle East. Naples' historic city center is the largest in Europe and has been designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A wide range of culturally and historically significant sites are nearby, including the Palace of Caserta and the Roman ruins of Pompeii and Herculaneum. Naples is also known for its natural beauties, such as Posilippo, Phlegrian Fields, Nisida and Vesuvius. Neapolitan cuisine is noted for its association with pizza, which originated in the city as well as numerous other local dishes. Restaurants in the Naples area have earned the most stars from the Michelin Guide of any Italian province. Naples' Centro Diarzionale was built in 1994 as the first grouping of skyscrapers in Italy, remaining the only such grouping in Italy until 2009. The most widely known sports team in Naples is the Soraya Football Club SSC. Napoli, two-time Italian champions who play at the Stadio Diego Armando Maradona in the west of the city, in the Fiorigrata Quarter. Naples has a bit of a reputation for having some not-so-great neighborhoods. While pickpocketing isn't uncommon in any major city, it's best to have your wits about you while you're wandering about town. Most tourists end up staying in the Decumani area. This part of Old Town is filled with shops and restaurants, but it can be a bit more expensive to stay here. Naples is widely known for its wealth of historical museums. The Naples National Archaeological Museum is one of the city's main museums, with one of the most extensive collections of artifacts of the Roman Empire in the world. It also houses many of the antiques unearthed at Pompeii and Herculaneum, as well as some artifacts from the Greek and Renaissance periods. Previously a Bourbon Palace, now a museum and art gallery, the Museo di Capodimont is another museum of note. The gallery features paintings from the 13th to the 18th centuries, including major works by Simone Martini, Raphael, Titian, Caravaggio, El Greco, Giuseppe de Ribera and Luca Giordano. The royal apartments are furnished with antique 18th century furniture and a collection of porcelain and majolica from the various royal residences, the famous Capodimont porcelain factory once stood just adjacent to the palace. In front of the Royal Palace of Naples stands the Galleria Umberto I, which contains the Coral Jewelry Museum. Occupying a 19th-century palazzo renovated by the Portuguese architect Alvaro Siza, the Museo d'Arte Contemporanea Donergina features an enfilade procession of permanent installations by artists such as Francesco Clement, Richard Serra, and Rebecca Horn. The 16th-century Palace of Rexella hosts the Palazzo del Arti Napoli, which contains the civic collections of art belonging to the city of Naples, and features temporary exhibits of art and culture. Palazzo Camo, which dates from the 15th century, 
host the Museo Filangiri of Plastic Arts, created in 1883 by Gitano Filangiri. Another popular choice is to stay down near the waterfront. Here you're near the Opera House, both of the waterfront castles and the port of Napoli. Fortunately, Naples has a great public transportation system so no matter where you choose to stay you'll be close to the action. Naples' underground metro system is a terrific way to spirit yourself around the city in a snap. You will want to spend what's left of your one day in Naples in the southern part of the city, so taking a quick metro ride is a great option here. The metro is more than a way to get from A to B, it's an attraction in and of itself. The art stations of Naples Metro is a city project that's seen a dozen of the stations transformed into immersive art installations, each the work of a talented local or international creative, with more than 90 artists and architects involved. Naples is a very popular port for the best cruise ships, as well as one of the most loved stops for the cruisers interested in foodie tours to taste the traditional Neapolitan dishes. Many decide to pay for an expensive day tour, there's no need to. Sunday, family day, is the best time to wander the streets and alleyways that make up La Pignesca. Many Neapolitan families follow a regimented Sunday routine, church, followed by watching a football game, and feasting. Buying just plucked produce and still steaming pastries from the delis and grocers around the market is an integral part of the tradition. You can visit La Pignesca any day of the week. However, the shops and informal stalls alike are perpetually chacas and the atmosphere is electric. Some vendors specialize in hand-formed cheeses or pasta, others present bountiful displays of fruit and veg, and there are plenty dedicated entirely to seafood from the Gulf. Once you arrive at Toledo Metro Station, Take some time to immerse yourself in the station building before you emerge back into the light of day. The street outside is a complete mental flip from the peaceful depths of the underground metro ecosystem. This is Via Toledo, one of Naples' oldest streets and most important thoroughfares. It runs for 1.2 kilometers north-south through the city and after the metro station, turns into a narrower, cobbled pedestrian street. This is the best section to explore by foot and coming out of the metro you'll be perfectly positioned to start the slow amble south. It would be redundant to and rattle off a laundry list of all the important churches, monuments and squares along this walking route. Simply follow the crowds, let your nose lead you down the side streets, and see what you can find. One place you should definitely bookmark for a pit stop is Pintoro, a small and difficult to spot bakery roughly two-thirds of the way down via Toledo. This shop started trading in 1818 and belongs to the family of Pasquale Pintoro, the first pastry chef in Naples to acquire the recipe for Esfogliatelle. Needless to say, the true-to-original rendition is pretty darn good. If you have some extra time up your sleeve, Quarteri Spagnoli, the neighborhood that creeps up the hillside to the west of Via Toledo, is another lovely suburban area to wander around. Thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this video, please share and comment on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel.